At that time, he had been married five years. His life was proceeding on a well-established, upwardly mobile track. He was extremely satisfied with his progress from naval officer to practicing lawyer. He was a scrupulously faithful husband, as he had just illustrated, and a loving father, a rising pillar in his community, respected, prospering, and, he supposed, thought well of by his neighbors and his peers. He was then on the cusp of thirty, and, by all measures, he could honestly consider himself successful. The future looked open, bright, and welcoming. Although he was not certain that such thoughts had been going through his mind at that precise moment, he was convinced that, time frame expected, they had frequently entered his consciousness. The choice of that moment was, he knew, a later reflection. The symbolic ice flow on which he was floating was about to be split into two parts. They would never be joined again until years later. It was her voice he heard first. Raucous. Loud. With its thick, unmistakable New York accent. Authentically ridiculous and much satirized. His back faced her table, and although he was tempted to turn, he could not muster the courage to shift his chair for a better view. I do not have an attitude problem, Gordon, she was saying. No way. That's the problem. You think it's attitude. What it is, Gordon, is knowledge of self. I'm me. I couldn't, under any circumstances, conjure up the possibility of a long-term relationship with you. Certainly not marriage. Essentially, Gordon, you have the soul of a materialist. You are an acquisition and control freak and very, very anal. You lack a metaphysical side. At first, Harris felt like an intruder, and his instinct was to turn a switch in his mind and try to eliminate her voice. But as the monologue progressed into dialogue, his reticence to eavesdropping disappeared. I guess I picked the wrong time and place, a male voice responded. We've had fun together, Gordon. Leave it at that. By now, you must know we live on different planets. Now that's bullshit, Becky, the male voice of Gordon responded. You're a girl from Great Neck, Long Island, for Christ's sakes. Where the hell do you think you came from? Under all that bleeding heart patina and intellectual snobbery is a spoiled, rotten Jewish-American princess from Great Neck. You talk to me of materialism? Hell, you were nursed on it. Putting me down won't solve your problem. One, can't put down what's already down. Life with you would be like living out one's years in the confines of a shopping mall. Worse... I would eventually evolve into one of the purchase objects, something to be put on a shelf for display and little else. And what are your prospects, Becky? The illusion of being Joan of Arc, savior of the downtrodden? What a joke. The privileged little Jap working uplift the Schwartzes and the Spicks. Who are you to appoint yourself the Mother Teresa of Harlem? It won't wash. Under it all, you're still a little girl whose mommy told you never to sit to pee on a brown toilet seat. Harris was confused. Jap? Great Neck? Schwartz's Spicks? Brown toilet seats? He felt as if he had encountered people from another universe. The tables of the cafe were all filled with the uninterrupted buzz of conversation. He noted that few people, if any, paid any attention to the confrontation going on behind him. It occurred to him that this was probably because they had heard it all before. He hadn't. Such compassion, Gordon. And what are you under it all? A greedy, heartless little bigot with delusions of superiority. There are two things that really drive you, Gordon. Your wallet and your dick. In that order. Harris blanched. Holy shit. I know you have a passion for frankness, Becky, but you sound like some mean-minded, sanctimonious little bitch. I ask you to marry me, for Christ's sakes. A simple no would do. You don't have to be insulting. There's a difference between insult and truthfulness. You and your vaunted truthfulness. It's the truth declared according to your wacko perceptions, Becky. That's not truth, it's opinion. Who the fuck do you think you are? I'd say you were lucky to get my offer. Nastiness was in the air. Harris's attention became acute. Even in his law practice, he hadn't heard such vitriol being exchanged so openly. 